Okay, for the PAS, the pedal assist system had a GPS mount for my motorcycle, which I snapped off, and it happened to have mounting brackets on the back to fit the handlebar of my motorcycle. And this part fits in the down tube underneath the seat to hold it to the uh, main frame. But it wasn't close enough to where I had to put on the magnetic uh, ring. I cut a slice out of a puck. I just went through and took a strip out of it. I drilled the holes to match the holes in here, screwed that onto there, and in the back here of this piece of puck I made it thick enough that it would stand off the right distance between where my pedals went around and the magnetic pickup and the uh, down tube. With my bandsaw I, I cut another hole in here big enough to receive this but not quite enough that it would fit all the way in just so there's a little bit left so when I squeezed it to here it would in fact hold it in place because it's threaded and that sits on the down tube of the uh, mountain bike but the magnetic switch sits on a bike is vertical and it's got a little hole in it where you can put a tie wrap around that and holding this in and one on the bottom a tie wrap around that bolt to hold it in to protect the cable coming over the motor from falling over and uh, ripping the cable out I actually drilled this hole uh, a little bit bigger and flat sided so that it would stick from the axle and not twist. So I would shove this onto the axle, pull the cable through, of course, and shove this on the cable and then force it onto the axle so it sort of protects it there. It sits on the wheel here. This piece actually came, another motorcycle goodie, it was a highway peg. With the uh, pause system next to the crank on my pedal, in order to take up some of the space that the pedal would fit actually right inside the bearing cavity a little bit uh, and therefore I had to move it out or that plastic part with all the magnets in it would be crunched in there so what I had to do is cut out all the fingers on the uh, magnetic ring and cut them down with actually with an exacto knife cut them basically right back to nothing and I got a couple washers and here you can see three different thicknesses that I'd worked with, if I assume you can see them, but it ended up being the thinnest one. I put it into, took the uh, disc off my one of my grinding wheels here from my drill, put this on in behind, tightened it up. Okay, uh, the plate is gone here. And just all it was is just that washer on there. Put a file in my vise and just spun it and brought the diameter, the outer diameter of the uh, spacer down to fit inside where the pedal used to fit. And it just took up enough space to put the magnetic ring just out far enough so it would be uh, running with the pedals and not uh, jamming on anything. The bike came with two cables uh, which plug into the uh, computer here and this fits on the brake lever. Two cables for left and right hand brakes so when you apply the brakes it cuts the power to the motor. But it has a magnetic reed switch and a magnet. It's like a washer. Very small. And I had a rough time trying to figure out on my particular uh, brakes how to connect that. Now my problem was how am I going to hold this little washer in the right spot so that it triggers the switch as it goes underneath and out in order to turn on and turn off the uh, brakes or the uh, motor when you pull the brakes. Well, what I came to doing is I took a uh, tie wrap, electrical tie wrap, shoved it through the hole like that. I took a second one, slightly bigger uh, than the one I got here, and I pulled it like that, tight. So now the main wrap cannot pull through the top. So I took the thing and, and put it around my lever on my handle but on my uh, brake lever and I put a little bit of rubber cement on it to hold it in the right spot so it wouldn't be slipping all over get my fingers out of the way so that can wrap around now cut the top one back and wrap the other part around one of the other things I had to do in order to make things work is on the front fork steel front fork on the surly bike I have 
I had to cut on the dropouts. I had to file some of the paint off it in order to make sure that the uh, axle from the motor fit in. I believe it's a 10 millimeter uh, axle on the motor and it was like 9.8 millimeters on the dropout from the uh, front fork. So I just took a file and took the paint off. That's all I took off. Okay. Okay, here's another thing I had to do. When I received my kit from uh, eBike BC, I ended up with a short cable that plugs into the motor. About a six foot cable to go from the front wheel through the frame and up to the uh, back underneath the seat. If you're doing it to the front wheel, make sure you've got a long enough cable. The rim that comes with the uh, comes with the motor on the uh, wheel does not have tape and the cutout holes on the rim. So what I did, which is many of this stuff on the internet, you can go look it up. I picked up some Gorilla tape and I put uh, two rounds of Gorilla tape. The first level of Gorilla tape, I put it on backwards so that the tape was exposed to the inside tube. Then I put a second piece of this tape on the correct way, tape to tape, so that the inside was smooth. So I needed two, uh, two strips of tape around the rim. In order to make the disc on the disc brakes fit into the receiver, the actual calipers here, uh, without, from one wheel to the other without having to uh, adjust them, I removed the spacer that was holding the disc from the disc brakes proud a little bit from the hub. But when I removed this, this disc on my regular wheel matched up almost perfectly with the disc from the motorized wheel and fit directly into the caliper when I switch wheels. I, if it doesn't, simple matter of undoing two bolts and sliding caliper in and out. This particular caliper had an adjuster out here you can turn to put the pad in and out and also one in the rear. You can actually turn and adjust the pads location in and out which makes it very simple for uh, putting the brake, the uh, changing wheels from one wheel to the other, the motorized wheel to the regular wheel. The uh, forks being steel are much stronger and can hold the torque of the motor. You can imagine that that little shaft is turning that whole wheel. So the parallel sides on the shaft plus a little square part on the washer, the inner washer you can see in this diagram, holds the torque of the motor in the front wheel when you give it a boot. Another item that the steel shaft does is right at the bottom of the dropout section they have a little weld bead which uh, uh, makes it a little bit thicker at the bottom. Therefore this washer, once it's tightened, can not only not torque or twist, but it cannot drop out because of the little welded beaded at the bottom. When you take your uh, battery out, and you're left with a battery holder, you've got exposed uh, contacts that the battery plugs into. Those are exposed to the elements, so what I did is took a 5 8 inch tube, which I have hanging around, piece of 5 8 inch dowling. Here's what it looks like. Slide that onto the uh, battery where the battery plugs in and protect it from the elements.